Hickok 45 here. And you know when you got a 45 70 in your hand, you need to shoot something pretty quick, right? <laughs> How about a pot? Well, look at that smoke. <laughs> I love it. The bowling pin just sitting right beside him like there's nothing going on. Yeah, we'll fix him. Four rounds, big rounds. Yes, Hickok 45 with a Henry in 4570, uh, a new Henry, okay? Yes, this is one of those that loads from a tube that I'm always complaining about. Let me double check it here, or she's empty. And uh, you always wanna double, triple check when you have a tube loader like this. All right, so it loads from the, the, the tubular magazine from the front, and I just, <laughs> this tube, this is amazing. This is funny because, uh, I mean, that talk about a, a magazine tube that is on steroids. Look at that thing. I'm used to my entire life loading a 22 rimfire, you know, like that. <laughs> and to have one of these at 45 is amazing. And I know I make fun of them. Uh, let's load some Federal. I, uh, I really do. It, you know, I've been shooting this thing some, though. I'll have to say, it's not as bad, maybe, as I uh, make it out to be. There's four. Uh, it's... <laughs> It feels like a, a well-made rifle, and uh, you know, even though it doesn't have a loading gate over here on the side, I, I, I guess I'm going to give up my my quest. I don't think Henry's ever going to make a rifle with a loading gate, and I'm going to I'm going to quit bashing them. I think for that, at least I'm going to limit my bashing. Okay, uh, I tell you one thing that changed my mind, has changed my mind a little bit. Now I'm still a traditionalist. Uh, I'm I'm not sure I'm ever going to buy a centerfire rifle that doesn't have a loading gate you know but uh i'm always making that comment and i've i've observed a lot of your comments coming back and messages and different things about how it really doesn't bother you at all uh you really like it and some of you prefer a loading tube so you've kind of changed my uh my stance on that a little bit or at least you've moderated it for me i think a lot of people uh have said things like it's it's simpler for you uh you have a hard time getting rounds into the loading gates and the boy on some rifles they really are hard i'll vouch for that i've got i've i've drawn blood you know loading them i know and it's not a combat rifle you know it's for hunting you know and if you uh you know four or five rounds isn't enough on one like this uh you know what are you hunting anyway you know i mean you make a lot of sense okay so i'll try to calm down on that a little bit but i'm just such a traditionalist and i've i've been such a lover well a lover of lever guns you know for a, uh, such a long time uh that when someone changes them up some fundamental aspect of them i just been a little, a little difficult for me to accept it i guess but this really does seem like a nice rifle let's shoot it a couple more times uh, again uh to to prove my point <laughs> I thought we, we, we have done one or two uh, Henry rifles and I thought I, they make so many of these things and you guys like them so much and, and I think they're fine. Uh, we need to pick out some of them that make sense and, uh, and kind of review them and shoot them. Okay. Even if they do have a tubular magazine for a 4570, I've got to get over it a little bit. Whoa, man. <laughs> Boy, something like a 45-70. Boy, that round has some punch. Yeah, I've got stuff all over the gun. It'll wipe four with some of my hand loads, 405 classic, uh, you know, loads, hard cast bullets, and that's a round I've loaded forever. I've pointed out before I've been a 45-70 guy for a long time. I. Uh, I load them on a progressive press, if that tells you anything. I mean, how many people do you know 4570 on a, a Dillon progressive? And uh, I have, I think, six or seven 4570 rifles. So that's pretty sick, huh? I guess I like them. I like the cartridge. Let's slow. Well, let's just put some more of these on. Now, it, it loads four. Uh, and really, it is just four. I mean, it's not four plus one with a tubular load unless i'm not thinking about something you can figure out i don't know how you could get five in it safely you could get five in it 
but I don't know that you could do it safely. Okay, it's definitely empty. So I'd have to have a round in the chamber in order to get five in, right? And then I'm up here, you know, messing with that. Uh, that's not good, a round in the chamber, you know? So uh, <laughs> whether it's cocked or not, and there's no other external safety, thankfully. So really it's a four round gun. I mean, I'm not gonna have one in the chamber up here and I'm not going to, like you could load it, uh, rack one in, fire a couple, whatever you wanna do, take the tube out and top off the magazine. How could you do that? You couldn't, could you? Because you, either way, you're gonna have your hand in front of the muzzle with a round in the chamber. So that is not advisable, okay? So let's uh, take a couple more. Let's go on over and wake up Mr. Gong. Might wanna put one in the chamber first. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. I'm gonna try the red plate. Uh, I think I have to hold the top of it. Hit it hard. Boom. Big old 4570. So if you're prowling around hunting and you need to reload uh, these big old rounds, you just pop that open. You know, as you're walking and have a pocket full, put them in, reload. It worked. It worked. Uh, again, I've had so many people, you know, share with me that it's not also a lot of people, you know, that, that, that hate the fact that there's not a loading gate. But a, a, a really a large number of people, it just doesn't bother. So I need to get over that a little bit. Let's shoot. Uh, some of these, the, the, the uh, trophy bonded bear claws, okay? Make sure it'll handle those. Appreciate Federal furnishing this really good ammo. Look at that, that's a bear claw. That is a hot round. I've shot these before. Of course, this is not a heavy, heavy gun. I think it's seven pounds, something like that. So it's, uh, it's going to kick a little bit. I didn't put an extra pad on it because the length on this is not bad. Now, maybe I should for the extra shock absorption, uh, but it's it shoulders really well uh, for this one. I don't really need the extra length. Okay, nothing in the chamber, of course. Uh, I wouldn't have been up there messing with that. So I understand with this gun, uh, doing some reading on it, it came out and a few years ago, and they uh, they had some problems with the magazine tube, and it came with a ghost ring sight originally and people were having trouble sighting them in and they had to kind of go back to the drawing board and, and uh, fix a couple of things now they they dovetail the whoops wrong turn around it they dovetail the uh, uh magazine right there in the site there used to be a barrel band on the early ones i think and all that and they put a, a semi buckhorn sight on it so it's turned into a nice rifle beautiful wood that is good. That is beautiful. American walnut. We checkered. So it's turned into a pretty nice rifle. This would be, I guess, a counterpart to say the Marlin guide gun. You know, it's a just a handy short uh thumper. Quite a thumper. So oh let's put one on the paper target here. This goes back in the box with the firearm for the e-gunner auction. <laughs> let's uh let's not waste these bear claws on paper <laughs> you know what there's a little bit of uh pot left there i can't believe it's still standing <laughs> smoke a little more pot i'll bet it'll knock that bowling pin off right there <laughs> yeah just four shots Reminds me of the 1886 I have that holds nine. That's pretty amazing. Nine rounds. Let's, uh, you know, we could have elephants invade the property, so we're gonna hang on to a couple of those. Try a couple more here. A little variety. It's nice to have all these choices, thanks to Federal. All right, so nothing in there. Okay, so if the 
I guess you couldn't leave the lever open, load the magazine, put one in, that probably wouldn't happen. Again, it doesn't matter, four or five, what's the difference? You're not going to combat with this, this rifle, and you definitely want to be safe. Never a good idea to have your hand out in front of that muzzle. <laughs> There's a round in the chamber, especially. Okay. Everything seems to be locking up positively on it. Uh, I've not had any trouble with it. Uh, yeah, um, it, it, it seems like a nice rifle. The, uh, the only negatives, again, the magazine tube, maybe loading system. I'm not going to totally give up my, my quest uh, on that, but uh, it, it is a nice little rifle, I have to say. It, this thing comes in a, in a brass uh, receiver and everything, and it also comes in an all-weather version that's hard-chromed. So if you're going to take it out and give it really hard use and hunt with it in the snow and ice, that, that all-weather version might uh, be more appealing to you. I tell you, for some reason, uh, as I looked at them, I could have ordered. I didn't know if I saw the old all-weather version at the Bud's website when I was picking this out, but I saw the, uh, the brass version. Now, normally, I really like a brass receiver. That's what uh, initially attracted me to the uh, the original, the Henry rifle, you know, made by Winchester back in 1860 and all that. That's uh, that's what I've always loved that that gun and the look and everything. And uh, most of the Henry guns look look fine with brass, but you know, I don't know. There's something about in, in this firearm where it's a little bit unconventional, the tube and everything. I, I actually prefer the blue. It just looks better to me. If I were going to buy one of these three. This would be the one I would want right here, as much as I like a brass receiver. Okay, so for what it's worth, let's put one of these on the uh, paper. Boom! Bullseye! You know what? There's a uh, two liter over there on that barrel. Let's see if I could give him some uh, grief. where I'm going. Can't see the bullets. I should be able to. Almost forgot what I'd put in there anyway. Oh, I know. I was putting my hand loads in. Let's shoot some of these. Yeah. I think I know better where to hold now. I've shot a few of these, uh, these Federal 300 grain rounds. This, uh, this Rifle retails or MSRP, I think, is about eight fifty. So it's not cheap. But what is? Of course, in a big boomer like this, you don't want something just thrown together. So, I, again, it's a nice option if you're looking for a kind of a brush gun or a, a short forty-five seventy like that. Be a good little hunter. All right, let's try that thing again. I got something. <laughs> I guess I ought to hunt a buffalo with this round. Ooh. Boy, that knocked him. That knocked him. Maybe a ram while we're at it. Ooh. Went under it or over it. Or left or right. Yeah. The only two problems I have, windage and elevation. Uh, big strong bolt, uh, walnut, you know, uh, trigger's nice, breaks fine. It's about the, the where I would want it. Uh, I'm not sure, I think I read maybe it was four, six pounds, I forget now, but it's, it's fine. You don't want a trigger too light on a rifle like this, and you don't want it to, obviously too stiff. Uh, this comes in 30-30 and 4570 all right for a lot of people the 3030 might make better sense uh if you don't want to spend the money on 4570 ammo none of the ammo is cheap of course but 3030 be a little bit less than 4570 and it would not kick you as much yeah i'm not sure where i, I don't want to i don't take a, a firearm like this uh somebody's gonna end up with this thing off the e-gunner i don't want to put a thousand rounds through it uh Let's see, I should have closed the thing here. Yep, okay, it's clear. Should have had that closed when I loaded, I think. That's what I like to do. 
go. So I'm not sure exactly where to hold, but I'm going to hit a ram if it takes me all night. So y'all get ready. Okay, it's going under it. Yeah. Let's try that big old tombstone over there. <laughs> that thing is heavy. It really rocked it. Try the gong. Boom. Even rocks the gong. Man. All right. We'll try four more shots to see y'all get to dinner. Uh, that is a big rifle. If you've never shot a 4570, you owe it to yourself to try it sometime. We're clear. We double check, you know, when you're messing around up here around the muzzle. I still can't get over that giant tube. Big old brass tube. Well, let's see. We're running low on that. That's all right. Let's open up this box. Get a couple more. We appreciate, again, Federal uh, doing what they do for us. And, uh, and Buds being able to grab one of these. And I'll continue to I'll look through the list every now and then on uh, rifles like this. Uh, I guess at some point we've kind of turned the corner. Uh, I've maybe been a little selfish over the early years of doing what we're doing. And I realized that uh, even if it's a firearm I don't like, you know, like the Kiapa Rhino, I'm probably not going to buy one. I can name others, which is a fine gun. If there's just a lot of interest in a firearm, and whether I am in love with it or not, uh, you know, a lot of people, for whatever reason, respect our opinions on firearms. So we need to uh, branch out and and just look at different things, even if, it's, even if it's not something that I might purchase, okay, necessarily. And uh, let you know what I think about it, or don't think about it. If I think at all, I try not to think too much. It hurts my head. All right. So and it is really interesting, uh, actually, even if it's a firearm, and I'm not implying this firearm is something I don't like, because I kind of like this, but uh, even if it's a firearm I really don't like, or even find this tasteful, it is interesting to, to get it in here and shoot it some, and, uh, you know, and often I'm a little bit surprised one way or the other. All right. I see a bowling pin lurking behind there. <laughs> oh, here's one over here. Oh, boy. 4570 Mar knocks them off without any problems. Oh, uh, let's pick on, you think I should? I shouldn't pick on this little baby 12 ounce drink here, but I think I will. Try not to hit any steel here this close. <laughs> yeah, was that overkill or what? Uh. Let's finish up with one on the gong. All right, so the Henry rifle in 4570 uh, in the blue version, uh, nice rifle. For you folks that are not bothered at all by a tubular magazine, uh, you would like this rifle. Uh, you really would. You folks that that have several Henrys and you just are very, very fond of the rifles, which, which they make great, great rifles. Uh, and you almost prefer a tubular magazine. This is right up your alley because it is a quality uh, piece of hardware. It just seems fine, seems fine, really solid. So uh, American made, you know, they do a great job and uh, provide a lot of options with their, their rifles. So, uh, Nice gun. I like it. Life is good. Well, since I'm still here, let me go ahead and thank SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, uh, for their support of the channel. If you're not familiar with them, they uh, do distance learning. They're fully accredited. You can get a, a certification in gunsmithing there. You can even get an associate degree in firearms technology, and you can go on to do a lot of different things with that, you know, if you're interested. So, uh, you know, there's hands-on training and everything. So check the link in the description, sdi.edu and uh, you know check it out i do a lot of work with veterans so it might be uh, of, of some interest to you so check that out and also keep in mind while i've got you while i'm still here that we are on full 30 now all our videos are over on full30.com 
and there's a link uh, in the video descriptions to that as well so you know watch us wherever you like to YouTube full 30 better yet both <laughs> And, uh, and keep in mind that uh, we have the Hickok 45 and Sun channel. Uh, John does a lot of things over there. I do some things over there, some Hickok history, different things. Uh, we've got the Hickok 45 uh, Facebook page. We do a lot on that. There's 400,000 uh, people following that. I hope you're one of them. Uh, the Hickok 45 and Sun Facebook page. Uh, so we've got a lot going on there. We've got the gun culture radio uh, show that John does. Now I'm on that show sometimes. Uh, over on Hickok 45 and Sun. So just want to make you aware of everything that's going on in case you might not be familiar with it, okay? And you'd better start getting familiar with it because if you don't, I'm gonna come to your house and have a chat with you. You don't want that to happen. And if I do, you'd better have good donuts and good coffee waiting for me, okay?